continues to be uh, you know, the strong man of the block, uh, up a quarter percent when everything's gone. And, of course, uh, everybody is uh, thinking that there will be a trade deal any moment, and they're all waiting, and they all think they're going to sell into that. I continue to think it's going to be uh, a longer-term uh, knockdown drag out may even take another year to get the trade deal with China done. Uh, so we'll look at that. Had a lot of stocks hit some highs, kind of roll over. Qualcomm got to 88.63. Today's back at uh, 86.31. I was looking at some other ones like Adobe that got up uh, above 280 bucks, back to about 277. These uh, not. Qualcomm, but uh, stocks like Adobe really never had any volume. In fact, they had kind of a bad reception to earnings, and people just kept buying them, um, you know, sell high and find a bigger fool to buy higher has been the mantra. Uh, before earnings tonight, I've been watching Tesla. It's down about 4 bucks, uh, and uh, we'll see how that turns out. But I have a feeling that we're going to have some skyrockets in that one. Um, I've talked about it for two years. You just never know the quarter that it's actually going to hit the proverbial fan. And you know what I'm talking about, that bovine stuff. Yep, they leave it in the fields. Don't, don't want it to hit the fan. How did that thing come up? I'm going to have to check that one out. Anyway, uh, after the bell, but man, uh, talk about a bad week. My guess it's going to get worse. And, of course, the SEC... Uh, agreement probably Thursday sometime maybe maybe Friday so they've got a lot of stuff of course uh, cars catching on fire uh, real wrath of God stuff dogs living with cats yes. how many people know that reference anyway uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com and of course uh, you can always call me at 877-927-6648 Hopefully the gentleman from Kansas City will call back today on a landline or something that uh, works better than the cell phone he had yesterday. And uh, what else do we have going on? I think that's it. We'll uh, talk about some of these earnings coming up. We'll look at the earnings today. And in the meantime, as always, we kick the show off with a little bit of history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1945, President Harry Truman learns the full details of the Manhattan Project. In fact, a couple of days before this, he didn't even know it, it existed, in which scientists are attempting to create the first atomic bomb. On this day in 1945, the information thrust upon Truman a momentous decision, whether or not to use the world's first weapon of mass destruction. Um, we would think a little bit differently uh, about it today. Uh, only... 25, you know, even in the, we think of, about how much money it costs in the, the uh, context of the war and the Depression. Uh, but uh, about $3.5 billion then, which is about $25 billion now. And then when we look at the uh, Apollo project all the way through, man, pretty much uh, through the, uh, the beginning of it when they announced the, uh, the uh, Apollo uh, astronaut, or the, just the entire astronaut corps. From that day on, uh, price adjusted, that was about $125 billion. And, of course, since then, we've done everything we could to make sure that we take uh, get the uh, ability to get any kind of uh, 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 area where uranium is uh, available and cut it off to other folks. Um, and that's uh, always one of those weird things. Anyway, uh, a big, I love uh, the history of that. It was some of the brightest minds at the worst of times. Um, I pretty much know everything that there is to know publicly about uh, atomic and nuclear weapons, how to build them, how to construct them, all the problems that they ran into as they were working on them. In fact, they decided to that uh, they weren't sure which way would work, so they went both plutonium and uranium-235. But uh, it continues to be a very tough um, uh, product, especially uranium. Uh, it's only about three-quarters at the best uh, of uranium-235. Most of it's uranium-238, which is not really useful unless you have the uranium-235. 
Uh, most people think that uranium-238 will not go boom, but guess what? It does a lot. They, uh, they actually make the cases for these things out of the uranium-238 because it will fuse given enough uh, power and does give uh, sometimes 20 to 30 percent of the uh, bomb's power. And of course, when we got to nuclear bombs uh, or uh, fission bombs, we found out just how powerful these things could be. Uh, the first one in 1953, about a thousand times more powerful than the one that blew up Hiroshima. And uh, we had some sound there. Listen, now I got it. We'll be back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we are back now. And hopefully we have everything up. Uh, well... It shows that it's up. I don't know what else to tell you. It says I'm sharing the chart. Maybe you guys figure it out. Maybe Hotcom needs to be rebooted. Not a big fan. Um, what else do we have? Boeing. Or I'm not going. Had earnings out today. A little bit of a bounce up here. Just a little higher. And yeah, I don't know what else you can say about it. That's about it. Um, mostly baked in. I think that's about it. Don't think there's a lot else to be had for it. ATI, 
Uh, also had earnings out here down a little bit, but no big uh, cigar for this one. Maybe more of a little handle. Down to about 24 bucks to uh, it's Allegheny Technologies. BIIB, of course, uh, Biotech's pretty much blew up a long time ago. Well, a couple weeks ago. Uh, down here on the 21st of March. It's just bouncing around these levels. Not much volume today. Maybe finding some kind of low. Uh, Caterpillar, another one of the big ones out from earnings. And that was, let's see. I understand that you say you see no chart. I don't know what I can do here. It won't let me. Uh, it actually says that it's broadcasting one. Um, I don't know what to do. I just turned it off. And I guess I can turn it on this one, but it doesn't do anything. I don't know what to tell you. Can't do anything about it. I click on it. I select it. And nothing. Uh, what do we have here? Still application. Uh, window. Nope. Won't do anything. I guess we won't have charts uh, until the break. Maybe we can uh, reboot and get whatever is not working working. Um, anyway, uh, Caterpillar down a bit today. Uh, 140. Uh, about where it opened up. Got down to 136.50. Um, you do have some decent volume compared to the same price range back on the 9th. Had about 3.3 million shares back then. You got about 6 million shares already. It did find a low, though, right there. Um, not a lot to write home about, not a lot to, to curse the stars about, maybe just a little weak, and that would be it. Yes, it's lip reading time <laughs> to you in it. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Centene, and eh, nothing in that one. Uh, let's take a look at Domino's, see what their death discs are doing. Again, this is uh, the pattern we've seen for probably a month on a lot of earnings, and that is that they go run the highs uh, and then rotate back down. February 12th to 97, 16 had 730,000 shares. Uh, went through it with a lot of volume today, 2.8 uh, million shares, but uh, way back down uh, at about 285 now. So a pretty good piercing of the previous high with all the kind of volume, but just cannot uh, hold it. And again, we've got a lot of those stocks uh, that have been doing that. Probably I'm going to say about 80% uh, do turtling or prairie dogging. They stick their heads out above those all-time highs and don't get a lot of volume and then come back into the trading range. Uh, eBay actually doing a little bit better than a lot of them. It's holding most of its bounce for today, going back into to a March 1st high. It's $39.14, 17 million shares. Oh, what do you have here? Uh, 14 million so far. So you're pretty far into that one. Um, you know, maybe they're finding a new home as an outlet for a lot of uh, low-cost Chinese goods, uh, but I can't say that I bought anything from them. Um, yeah, it says that it's off, but if I actually uh, look at the uh, hot com button, it actually says on. So I don't think there's anything I can do about that. It's just not working. Okay, what do we have? EDU. And that is New uh, Oriental Education. Talked about this one for a, a little while. Of course, the four pay education market here in the United States kind of might, pretty much got creamed over uh, the last five or ten years. So they're trying it in the uh, great uh, far east. Um, this one did get a little higher to 95 bucks today, came back into the trading range though, and trading around 91 as we speak. Edward Life Sciences uh, also doing fairly uh, benign after their earnings today, uh, just kind of hanging out about what the last three or four days have been. Uh, what was this one? Uh, da, 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 fifth, third, we talked about this one. Coming up on earnings, a whole lot of nothing today. And uh, we continue to kind of look at this, but not much happening there. 
Uh, uh, Forward-looking infrared uh, radar is, is that what it is, radar? I think it is. Forward-looking infrared. Maybe that's just it. No radar. Uh, also pierced the highs and retreated. A lot of turtle and a lot of prairie dogging. Today sticking their heads out, putting it right back in the hole. February 25th, $53.20, 1.35 million shares. Goes right back into the uh, to that today, not holding above that, but already has 2.2 million shares. And that is it. Okay. And what do we have? Um, GATX, big, big, wide-ranging doji for the day. And uh, not much different than yesterday, up to 82.27 and uh, down to about nine, uh, 75 bucks. And I don't know what else you can say about it other than that. That is, uh, man, that's a wide range for the day. Uh, GATX, let's go ahead and look at their profile here and see what they're talking about. Um, to, 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 to. Uh, leases or operates, manages, and re, uh, remarkets assets in the rail and marine markets worldwide. The company operates through four segments, rail North America, rail international, portfolio management, and, steam, and this American steamship company. Primary leases, rail cars, and lo uh, locomotives. Well, that's kind of an interesting business to be in. GATX is the symbol on that. Of course, we've got a lot of railroads uh, reporting over to the next couple of days, so you want to keep on on that. Another one uh, peeking its head and turtling yet again is General Dynamics, who the December 3rd high of 187.47 with 1.4 million shares. Uh, and uh, you had 2 million shares and could not hold it. Got to 193.11 and retreated uh, like Custer wanted to, uh, but uh, eh, similar amount of blood on the highway on that one. How many people got to watch that Blood on the Highway movie uh, when they were taking driver's ed? Just wondering. Blood on the Highway. That was my favorite movie in high school, in the high school. But that's it. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. 
in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, we're going to take a look at the markets, but it's going to take me just a second. I had to reboot my machine, get everything working again. Sometimes things just have to be rebooted and started over. And, of course, not much movement in the uh, S&P out here. Still stuck down about three points. Uh, Dow's down 49. NASDAQ's off eight. So, again, probably a, a lot of hurry up and wait for earnings tonight. And, uh, of course, most people waiting to look at Microsoft. Kind of always in the last, I don't know, this last run above 120 seems to have been fairly weak. I would not be surprised to see it come back to 120 after earnings tonight, um, they're doing very well and maybe stealing a great deal of business from Amazon and Google in the military and industrial complex, as they like to say. Uh, but even then, I have a feeling that, I mean, this thing's done very well. Still, still is the best managed stock uh, in technology, I suspect, um, at least large cap. Uh, and uh, I don't know if there's much that you can do uh, with it other than wait for a pullback, which I think you will get. But I, I had just kind of a bandwagon effect, um, probably worth much more close to 105 bucks. But uh, once a stock becomes king, everybody wants to love it to death. Uh, let's see what else do we have out here we want to look at. Uh, let's check my email. And again, uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Um, okay. Well, someone wants to look at Apple. I haven't looked at it for a couple of days. It's uh, just up against resistance like the entire market up here. On this one, it's very tough for me to see what really changed from 142 up to this level, uh, other than the fact that they are holding their earnings by selling lots of uh, wireless uh, earbuds, uh, which is probably the only thing that's actually saved them. Unit sales, if you look at most people, are not doing that well. Uh, one of the ways you can figure out what they're doing is to look at Best Buy. It had a little gap up today on very light volume so far today. But uh, as it uh, goes through uh, 7591 today, that's actually challenging the high of November 2nd, uh, last fall, and that came in with 4 million shares. You got about uh, 2 uh, million, eh, maybe 2 million shares, uh, 2.5 million shares back on the 4th, and you're back into that same range today, though, with 1.4 uh, million shares. So pretty weak in that. Best Buy really is uh, an outlet for Apple and Samsung. So that kind of tells you if you watch that. I don't, everybody kind of piled on Apple. Um, like I said, I don't know if there's much difference than when this thing went uh, in the business, trading at 142 than 208, other than the fact that everybody and their dog thought that this was a stock to short. And that's almost always a good sign uh, that you're on the wrong side if everybody thinks that this is the stock that you should short. Okay. And what do we have? Um, let's take a look at see what Apple's been doing lately for their short sellers. Um, you know, you, there were weeks where this thing where one out of four shares was shorted 
on um, a transaction on a daily basis. We're down to about 15 percent, maybe 16 percent for the last week or so. But still, for a, a stock, for a company that's got 250 billion in cash, isn't there a better place to short? I mean, you short the weak. You don't and go along the strong. You don't want to pile on a company that has a lot of cash that can always buy shares back. And the question is, how many have they bought on the way back up here to hold this up? Um, hard to tell. But uh, one of the things that's out there. Um, was talking to uh, Larry Pezzavento this morning. Uh, I did say that there were a lot of these stocks that looked like maybe they'd hit uh, bottom uh, in the gold market. Uh, one that caught my eye was uh, Pan American Silver. Uh, this one tested the March 7th low at $12.43 with 2.4 million shares. Uh, today, or yesterday, actually, 1.6 million shares. So fairly light, and you got the bounce out here today. But again, not a lot of follow through. You got about three days where you want that to actually to come back out. Um, one of the questions I had that no one seems to answer. Uh, for the people that are bat uh, uh, excrement crazy on uh, Tesla, is why uh, SQM, which is chemical mining of Chile that makes all the lithium that goes in the batteries, uh, is uh, looking so poorly down here. It went down on kind of lighter volume than the uh, low going back to December 26, uh, but it's continuing to go a little lower. But if there was a massive demand, for lithium and the ability not to get it, um, it's going to show up in this stock. It's going to show up in other stocks that sell, um, you know, batteries. Um, maybe, you know, the last few days since uh, uh, this, uh, the uh, Tesla caught on fire uh, in China and burned out an entire um, parking structure with uh, two levels, uh, some uh, some uh, hundred and some odd cars literally torched to nothing. Uh, and, of course, the worst thing about uh, that for Tesla was there was a security camera in there, and it caught it all. And you can just watch it burn. Uh, so, um, in fact, I'm writing about that for the Tech Insider on Friday about lithium-ion batteries and the problems that they continue to have, even though they try to mitigate uh, the problems as much as possible. Um, if you've ever been in a cave or seen a picture of a cave, they've always got the uh, stalactites and stalagmites, the ones that come from the top and the ones that come from the bottom. Well, you get the same thing in lithium-ion batteries, and if those two touch, you got a direct short, and the car burns to the ground. Uh, they've tried to put these things in little blocks where they can contain it. It's still, you know, uh, it's still problematic at best. Uh, but it still happens. And, um, you know, if you look at uh, lithium polymer batteries, which some people use, don't have the same kind of problem with it. But straight lithium ion uh, do have those problems. And the question is, how fast can they actually get a new technology to take over lithium ion that doesn't have that kind of issue? They call them dendrites, actually. But they, if, if you just looked at them in a microscope, or any of the pictures you see, they actually just look like stalactites and stalagmites. Although I never can remember which ones. I think it's the stalactites are the ones above. Stalagmites are the ones on the bottom. But it's one of those things that only a mystery of the world can solve. Okay. So what else do we have going on here? Again, yeah, off three points. No big deal. But the big story, like I said, we're going to keep track of during this show is the volume. Uh, 4.14 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated volume report. Uh, if you want a, a, a link to that, just go ahead and email me at path at tfnn.com. I'll be glad to send it to you. It's got all the different uh, tapes, um, so you can actually see what uh, the NASDAQ and the Amex are doing and uh, the, the uh, NASDAQ too. And, uh, Pretty good, uh, pretty good page. Be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. 
The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors distributor for side fund services llc don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv for the latest market information And we're back. Uh, great heads up in the den. Always a uh, good time in there. And, of course, people pointing out stuff that you need to be looking at. And, of course, uh, I, was, uh, I knew that we had kind of a nice run at the beginning of the show back up uh, in the dollar index. But, man, we're up uh, 50 cents again, 97.82. And uh, the question is whether or not uh, the Treasury and, of course, um, the Fed have lost control of the price of the dollar, but certainly 97.81, uh, quite a move. And, of course, they've been working very hard to keep it above 95. And does look like some kind of significant break. And thanks, uh, Maria, for pointing that out. I, but we had one more leg up that looks like an ABC off about uh, 12 o'clock. So, yeah, maybe something is going on out there. Um, so, yeah, there's something happening. What it is isn't exactly clear, but there's a man with a beer over there. I changed the words. Uh, okay, what else do we have? We're going to look through a few more of these. Um, if you listen, I, I basically talked about uh, earlier in the day. In fact, I said, I think it earlier, maybe... 9 o'clock hour, 10 o'clock hour. I heard a bunch of people talking last night about peak oil again, and I thought, my God, uh, maybe maybe this is it. Maybe this is the point where Armageddon for the price of oil sets in. 
And of course, we've talked about it for the last month that this is where the oil supply really comes on because you had a lot of uh, refineries and oil producers that shut down their uh, rigs uh, for the winter summer uh, formula uh, to change over. And from what I've read, and most experts, they say it doesn't do any good uh, and that uh, they should just leave it alone and we should have one formula for the whole year except maybe in Denver and L.A. They're probably the only two places that makes any difference. Uh, but uh, they're a pretty big expense in that. Uh, but uh, now we've got all those rigs probably firing back up. The Baker Hughes rig numbers, of course, out on Friday uh, were a little light, but that's the last one that should be light. We should see nothing but probably a slow progression of more rigs now for a while as that summer formula uh, rollover is over. And we also see a much better uh, um, amount of uh, gasoline hitting the market. So we're probably fairly close to some kind of high. We do have a fairly decent signal out here uh, that is just a small rollover in Exxon, which we've been talking about. Um, in fact, the last couple of days we talked about how a lot of these energy stocks all look like they were down to one lung on what they were doing. Not on one lung, uh, on both lungs was the technology sector yesterday with a good day and some decent volume, 16.7 million shares as it went through a 14 million share high. Now the question is, do we get some kind of reversal out of that and a pullback um, to about 78 on the XLK? Uh, that is problematic. Um, but again, the entire market's up here with very, very light energy. And uh, we'll see whether or not the dollar actually does anything to this. Right now, basically flat. My guess is that we will stay there for a while. On my radar, uh, Wix company, these guys make a uh, front end that makes websites. Um, kind of tough to see how this thing... Uh, is up here. Uh, the business, uh, especially with the cloud business, uh, kind of tough. February 19th, 125.84, 1.6 million shares. Got into it with 415,000 shares yesterday, 267,000 shares today. If you're looking for some low-hanging fruit, I do not know when the earnings are, but I will check. Uh, to, to May 22nd. So you got a little bit of time out here, but this one certainly back over those highs uh, with no juice whatsoever. And basically a, kind of a big website company. And I don't know uh, at the retail level whether or not they can actually make that kind of money stick. We've seen other companies like that. Uh, they have kind of a boom and bust cycle. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. United Technologies. Uh, you had kind of a, the opportunity for maybe a uh, shooting star. You got about another doji out here today on this one. Volume was a little bit better on that from earnings yesterday. Now the question is whether or not a shooting star is a shooting star if you get another close lower uh, tomorrow uh, for a reversal level. Uh, we talked about SQM ring, RNG. Uh, this one looks on a very short-term basis of a very light volume test of a 2.9 million share high going back to February 12th. That was in 109.84. RNG is the symbol on this one. Uh, you get into April 3rd with 700,000 shares. Instantly comes back down to 101.33. Uh, and then, of course, a pop back up here today with this 370,000 shares so far. When we look at this one, earnings coming up May 6th, so not that far away. It may hang up there a lot longer than you think. Netflix, another one uh, hanging at the highs, may be giving a fairly decent signal against this resistance level. March 21st, 379 got into it yesterday, just short a million shares. Again, I think that there are much better stocks to short 
And if I go back here and check, my guess is that this one is going to show a great deal of short interest in it. Um, I like the short stocks that everybody isn't always talking about or that they talked about a lot and now are no longer talking about. Um, but yeah, 23% uh, shorts yesterday. Overall, uh, this thing's got uh, 15 million, 15.3 million shares short in the last reporting period back on the 29th. So uh, you've got, uh, again, just too many shorts in it. Uh, did we talk about uh, Pan American Silver? Um, I can't remember if we did or not. Uh, again, a few of these stocks out here in earnings land uh, showing some lows. March 7th, $12.43, uh, 2.4 million shares, got into it with 1.6 million shares. You got your bounce today. Uh, you also had the same thing in KGC. Uh, Ken Ross Gold, uh, the March 4th low came in at $3.12. With 23 million shares, you only had 8.7 million shares yesterday. A nice little bounce out of that one today. Uh, to the Harmony Gold, HMY. Another one uh, with a little bounce. 6.4 uh, million shares on April 1st at a buck 78. I uh, got into it last three days with about uh, the most at about 3.4 million shares. Today, a small bounce on 2 million shares. But again, it looks like at least you're somewhere close to support. Generac. Breaking out, but again, no volume up here. You wanted about 1.6 million shares. You got about 135,000 today. GNRC is the symbol on that. Give me a call. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his 
subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And, uh, yeah, a little discussion in the den here about what's, uh, if there's any news moving anything. But um, only thing I know of that might move the dollar in Asia that much is, of course, the trade delegation is over there. And maybe something's leaked um, about that. Uh, I don't think it has much to do with the oil sanctions. You actually figure out how much, how little Iran has to do with the oil, and if they just all decided to not sell a dime of it tomorrow, uh, that we'd move along and probably never notice. It has a great deal to do, though, with how much ships, which has held oil up a little bit higher. Silicon Laboratories, the big winner of the day. Uh, and that's it. 110.11 today, holding the highs. And as far as I can tell, uh, a rosy outlook from their earnings call. Everything that you wanted to see, not many of these, I'm, like I said, maybe one out of five uh, stocks that is going higher, not the ones that disappointed, but the ones that are going higher are able to break through previous highs or even uh, hold them. Now, this one hasn't quite done it. It's about 60 cents short of the June 7th high. That one had 355,000 shares. You already have 1.2 million shares. So you got a lot of volume, but, man, you're about 60 cents short. And uh, probably the good thing on that one is it's holding the highs, uh, where many of them just got up there even closer than 60 cents and gave it up. But you got to keep a, kind of a close eye on all of these. Again, after the bell tonight, we got a lot going on uh, with Microsoft, uh, Tesla, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, and of course, uh, just in time, back uh, from uh, putting back uh, together the Great Wall of China is Tom O'Brien. I'm sure he'll regale us with uh, many of the uh, wonderful actions that happened over there in China. Love to hear about it, and of course, uh, a plethora of earnings in the four o'clock hour. Welcome back, Tom. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow.